While the FAA has yet to confirm a Flight 5 schedule, Save RGB has filed a lawsuit against SpaceX over issues related to the water flooding system. Will that affect the launch schedule? Right now, NASA and SpaceX are working hard to protect the Europa Clipper and Falcon Heavy from an impending storm. Meanwhile, concerns about the deorbiting of the ISS are growing. There's a lot of important news to cover, so let's jump right into today's NR Studio episode. Right now, preparations for SpaceX Flight 5 are moving quickly toward completion. The company's updates reflect a strong sense of determination. In a remarkable turn of events, after much criticism, the FAA finally issued its first positive update, signaling that the launch schedule is indeed feasible. Despite the smooth sailing, my skepticism still lingers. Of course, problems will soon be discovered. On October 9th, an environmental organization we've previously highlighted, Save RGB, officially initiated legal proceedings against SpaceX for illegal water discharges at the Book Jicatex launch site. According to an update from Bloomberg Law, Save RGB has petitioned a judge to bar SpaceX from using the water dilution system located beneath the OLM, which is designed to prevent launch pad explosions, until the company obtains a national pollutant discharge system permit that complies with the Clean Water Act. The organization has highlighted that SpaceX's system has been contaminated no less than 13 times without the required permit. They further explain that the high temperatures generated during testing allow metals such as mercury, aluminum, and zinc to leach into the water, contaminating the surrounding area. The lawsuit, which Save RGB announced in June, alleges that SpaceX has violated the state's Clean Water Act. Save RGB is now petitioning the court to impose a daily fine of $56,460 should SpaceX persist in utilizing the system. They have previously proposed even more stringent penalties, including the possibility of banning SpaceX from launching from its current facility or compelling the company to vacate Boca Chica entirely. The TSEC and IPA have not yet provided a response to the lawsuit. However, SpaceX will undoubtedly refuse to entertain such absurd allegations. On X, SpaceX highlighted that the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality has conducted a thorough technical review of the water-cooled flame deflector used in SpaceX's Starship. This system, which utilizes potable, drinking water, has been assessed and found to pose no environmental risk, a conclusion we have elaborated on in detail here. We have received explicit permission from TSCC to operate the system in accordance with the terms outlined in the consent order as well as a close-out letter from the EPA regarding its administrative order. The TSEC also provided a recent update regarding the environmental challenges encountered by SpaceX. This information was shared in the previous month. These concerns were frequently highlighted, notably in a statement made by Gwynne Shotwell before the Texas House of Representatives. In all honesty, the allegations put forth by RGB-039 stand in stark contrast to the FAA 039's report. According to the FAA, Starship's deloge system is anticipated to produce effects comparable to less than an average summer rainfall event, significantly reducing the likelihood of any detrimental impact on water quality. In light of this, SpaceX determined that RGB, while cognizant of these clear facts, nonetheless proceeded to file an unwarranted and frivolous lawsuit this raises questions about the motivations behind such litigation. The primary objective of SpaceX in developing the water deluge system was to prevent damage during launches or tests. Let's explore Flight 1 to gain a better understanding of that. It is evident that the installation of the water deluge system has significantly enhanced the operations of Starship. I am curious whether the Save RGB lawsuit seeks to rectify the damages incurred in the past. This may provide an additional impetus for them, alongside other environmental agencies, to initiate new lawsuits. Once more, it is evident that environmental organizations are attempting to impede the progress of SpaceX and the Starship Initiative, despite the lack of convincing evidence behind their claims. However, irrespective of the outcomes, these lawsuits will demand substantial time from SpaceX, thus considerably hindering the progress of Starship's development. The initial impact may be observed on Flight 5, following the confirmation of the launch date by SpaceX and NASA. We are currently awaiting the decision from the FAA. Everything remains uncertain, with the exception of RGB's lawsuit, which could potentially impact the launch schedule. 
Once RGB is saved, it's likely that numerous environmental agencies, including TSC, EPA, and FWS, will join this movement to impede SpaceX's progress. The FAA has consistently delayed and imposed fines on SpaceX, hindering its progress. This ongoing scrutiny highlights the challenges the company faces in navigating regulatory hurdles. Following considerable scrutiny, this agency appears to have no justification for halting Starship's flight. This could potentially present an opportunity for them to postpone matters once more. It would be quite disheartening if these avoidable obstacles were to delay the flight, especially when we were so close to taking off. Hopefully, despite these arbitrary obstacles, Flight 5 will take off as planned. Now more than ever, SpaceX seeks your invaluable support. Kindly share your thoughts by commenting on whether Flight 5 should proceed. Your input is invaluable. We invite you to like, share, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on the exciting journey of SpaceX's development. Your support makes all the difference. Wrapping up the Starship section, let's transition to an update on the Europa Clipper mission. Hurricane Milton poses a significant threat, particularly to Florida, a key hub for numerous aerospace launches. Its impact is deeply concerning for the region's vital role in the industry. One of the most noteworthy missions established during this period is NASA's Europa Clipper. The spacecraft was initially slated for launch on October 10th aboard the Falcon Heavy. The schedule has indeed shifted, as the Falcon system has not yet received clearance from the FAA to resume flight. However, the payload and launch vehicle of the mission will continue to be meticulously safeguarded. In recent days, the Europa Clipper spacecraft and its Falcon Heavy rocket have been securely positioned within a SpaceX hangar adjacent to their launch pad at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. This meticulous arrangement marks a significant step forward in the preparations for the upcoming mission. On X, NASA elaborated that the encapsulated Europa Clipper spacecraft was transported to the SpaceX hangar at Launch Complex 39A on Friday, October 4th. The spacecraft was secured in the hangar and preparations for the hurricane commenced at NASA's Kennedy Space Center on Sunday, October 6th. Moreover, Tim Dunn, the LSP Senior Launch Director for Europa Clipper, underscored that the safety of launch team personnel is our utmost priority. He assured that every precaution will be implemented to safeguard the Europa Clipper spacecraft. These steps are crucial for ensuring the preparedness of both the payload and the launch vehicle. It is essential that every detail is meticulously addressed. The Europa Clipper mission, with a budget of $5 billion, aims to investigate the water ice concealed beneath the surface of Europa, one of Jupiter's intriguing moons. Due to the repercussions of the hurricane, coupled with the delays from the FAA, it appears that the mission may not be able to launch in the near future. The launch window for the mission has been extended until November 6th, it is to be hoped that the hurricane will move on swiftly, allowing for the timely completion of procedures, thereby facilitating the resumption of aerospace activities. The materials on the International Space Station, ISS, are still uncertain. Additionally, the remaining debris poses a potential threat to marine life. George Leonard, chief scientist at the Ocean Conservancy, commented, the ongoing debate over disposal of the International Space Station highlights a critical issue. Humanity has often neglected end-of-life strategies for the products we make. This scenario underscores the convergence of space exploration and environmental concerns. Personally, I believe that a deorbit plan targeting the Pacific Ocean remains the most viable option, although there is still room for optimization. With the support of SpaceX and Dragon, I am confident that everything will ultimately work out very well. What are your thoughts on the controversy surrounding the ISS deorbit plan? I invite you to share your insights in the comments section below. Well, everyone, that pretty much wraps up today's episode. Thanks for joining us. See you in the next episode.